sorting by the guests. And do we have a I have lots of slides to cover today, and so we're going to go very quickly. And every time I point, if you will go, let's, the disclosures keep going. Let's keep going, please. Forward. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Keep going. So we've gone over this already. Okay, so there are many things about entrapments. We know that entrapment neuropathy is defined as a pressure-induced injury to a peripheral nerve in a segment of its course due to anatomic structures or pathologic processes. These entrapment neuropathies are current anatomical sites, and so the nerve changes direction to enter a fiber osseous tunnel or where a nerve passes over a fiber osseous or muscular band. And this entrapment occurs at these sites because of pressure. So, <coughs> so these entrapments are can be narrow anatomical spaces, they can be bands or scar tissue, they can be bony callus, and they can be compression because of things like braces or casts or because of edema or inflammation. <coughs> We may have some problems with the slides here, so we have to go a little faster, I think. So the characteristics are burning and tingling that will be in an area, that, especially paresthesias with compression, tenel sign. Of the limb, and is there any old trauma that might have triggered this? 
So the, we know that nerve trauma leads to ischemia, and that causes CRPS. And in many ways, this is the, uh, the whole theory that combines nerve entrapments with CRPS. And this hypermobility can lead to nerve entrapment as well. So you have to know a pattern recognition. You have to be able to do an inspection to recognize the atrophy here or the bulge here. And so this inspection is very important. And then probably the most important thing is to ask where it hurts. Have the patient show you where it hurts. That can give you a great deal of information. And so then the physical exam, the palpation of known entrapment sites, can, because these nerves, when they're sensitive, are exquisitely tender. And then we have EMGs, we have MRIs, we have ultrasound, we have all sorts of ways of evaluating patients, but probably in my mind, the very most important is the diagnostic injection. And that diagnostic injection can be landmark guided, it can be um, with a ner peripheral nerve stimulator, ultrasound, CT, or fluoroscopy. Uh, we have other treatments such as cryo um, that allows us to be able to freeze the nerves and um, ultrasound guided permanent implantation of peripheral nerve stimulation as well. And so we're going to talk about a couple of topics sort of from the head to the toe and try and go through these quickly to get you to keep you on schedule. So we'll start with headaches. The supraorbital neuralgia is the first branch of the trigeminal nerve. Physical exam over the top of the eye at the supraorbital notch. And then um, you can see this under ultrasound, landmark guided injection, cryoneuroblation, and peripheral nerve stimulation. The auricular temporal nerve is in the temple. It's a third division trigeminal nerve. Physical exam, making an equilateral triangle with your fingers and the landmark guided injection and cryoneuroblation and the peripheral nerve stimulation. The occipital nerve, very common cause of headaches, but also of things such as um, uh, the, um, all sorts of different kinds of headaches like cluster headaches, tension headaches. The nerve comes from, uh, C2 comes across the, the inferior oblique and comes up to the back of the head. Two sites of entrapment, one of three actually, one here, one through the splenius, and one under the head that comes across the, in, the inferior oblique. Trying to make sure that you stay out of the foramen magnum. And then landmark guided injections. If you notice, my finger is here in the foramen magnum to prevent any problems. The uh, ultrasound guided injection, cryoneuroblation, uh, peripheral nerve stimulation. Facial pain, we see things like the infraorbital nerve, which is a second division of the trigeminal nerve, physical exam, the landmark guided injections, extraoral or intraoral, the ultrasound, uh, cryoneuroablation, and the mental nerve. Um, this gets misdiagnosed many times as oral trauma, um, the tenderness over the foramen, the internal, either uh, examined externally or intraorally, ultrasound, we've got chest wall pain for things like the uh, long thoracic nerve, which gets forgotten. Remember that it is you have the suprascapular nerve and the long thoracic nerve coming from the brachial plexus. And by the way, anyone who wants these slides at the end, there are, you'll see my email address and I'm happy to send you the slides. Yet this comes from the neck. Here you see the dorsal scapular nerve and the long thoracic nerve in through the middle scalene muscle and the coming through the axilla, so it gets traumatized with chest wall injuries and mastectomies. Uh, physical exam, the landmark guided injection, uh, ultrasound guided injection. Then we have the dorsal scapular nerve, gets misdiagnosed um, as problems either of the heart or uh, the ribs. So you'll have an infra, uh, an, a uh, periscapular pain that radiates into the chest and down the arm. It'll mimic a heart attack. The nerve comes from C6, comes under the levator and through the rhomboids. Um, so it gets trapped in the interscaling groove. Again, you see it under ultrasound um, at the, uh, through the middle scaling nerve. The physical exam rolling that scapula out of the way to be able to feel its entrapment at the medial scapula, um, ultrasound guided injections, landmark guided injections, and um, ultrasound as well. 
then the upper extremity pain, we have the suprascapular nerve. It gives you pain over this uh, cake area. The nerve gets trapped in two areas, the suprascapular nerve, the notch, but also the sphenoglenoid notch. It is, a, I call this by both in death grip, um, landmark guided injections, fluoroscopically guided injections, ultrasound guided injections, cryoneuroablation, peripheral nerve stimulation. Radial neuralgia at the, the superficial radial of the wrist, a uh, very common cause of pain from IV infiltrations, from the uh, colleagues' fractures, from just that trivial injury hitting the hand and developing CRPS. The, the pain along the thumb area gets misdiagnosed as decra veins. The physical exam, as so though you're holding, they're giving them a handshake and feeling the nerve across the top of the wrist. You'll see it here along the forearm, and you can see how easily damaged that would be. The ultrasound and stimulation. And then abdominal wall pain, we see the anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment. The nerve gets trapped at the edge of the rectus border through multiple intercostal and subcostal nerves. The, as the nerve pierces through the, uh, in the rectus sheath, it becomes important to recognize this mimics cholecystitis, appendicitis, endometriosis, any of a variety of abdominal and pelvic problems. Uh, the physical exam tenders along the edge of the rectus, landmark guided injection, ultrasound guided injection. You see the rectus, the double layer of peritoneum, and as you travel laterally, you see the edge of the rectus where the vessels and nerves are coming in, um, cryoneuroablation, and um, peripheral nerve stimulation. And then pelvic pain, we have a wide variety of pelvic pains from the ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric, and the genitofemoral nerve, the, giving you a pain in the pelvic region. The, super, the genitofemoral gets trapped at the pubic tubercle. The, you see, notice here, this is an interstim um, for interstitial cystitis, but the underlying problem was actually a problem with the genitive femoral nerve and a pubic uh, a pubicitis, the cryoneuroablation, and um, under ultrasound, you can see the, uh, the genitive femoral nerve next to the, to the femoral artery and cryoneuroablation of the genitive femoral nerve there. And then the pudendal nerve is one of the most complicated nerves we have. It, is, um, it can be seen under ultrasound. It can also be seen under fluoroscopy at the edge of the ischial spine. The uh, cryoneuroblation, ultrasound, um, cryoneuroblation at Adcox Canal as well. And then for low back pain, we see the misdiagnosis of superior clunial neuralgia that causes problems in the buttocks, but also pain all the way down the leg to the foot. It's one of the pseudo-sciaticas. Uh, physical exam along the top, tenors at the top of the iliac crest. Landmark guided injection. You'll see the anatomy of the nerves. There could be up to five superior cluneal nerves, but it's usually coming across, but it's usually the most medial that are the problem. You can see them under ultrasound, uh, inject them under fluoroscopy, cryoneuroblation, or peripheral nerve stimulation. And then the superior gluteal nerve gets trapped between the piriformis and the gluteus medius muscle along with this artery. A physical exam in the uh, ischial fossa, landmark guided injection, fluoroscopically guided injection, ultrasound guided injection, cryoneuroblation. <laughs> and then the lower extremity, my probably favorite nerve, is the infrapatellar saphenous nerve. It's the most common cause of knee pain that I found for both osteoarthritis and for post-surgical, including knee replacements. Uh, the tenderness at the infrapatellar saphenous nerve, landmark guided injection, ultrasound guided injection, um, and note here that the nerve is not always in the issue in the tibial flare, uh, cryoneuroblation, peripheral nerve stimulation. And then going down to the foot, the superficial perineal nerve coming across the top of the foot. This gets injured with the inversion injuries, with um, in surgeries to the ankle. Um, they have the whole variety of nerves coming down to the foot, sural saphenous and superficial perineal and deep perineal. The physical exam of the superficial perineal, landmark guided injections, 
ultrasound guided injections, and then the posterior tibial nerve is um, the bottom of the foot, the tarsal tunnel with its trapment, um, either before the, uh, uh, at the level of the tarsal tunnel or before heel pain. It's been seen under ultrasound with the vein artery vein in the tarsal tunnel and then tra tracked proximally and uh, peripheral stimulation. So in summary, we know that these entrapments can cause a variety of pain uh, uh, conditions including headaches, facial pain, neck pain, chest pain, upper extremity and lower extremity pain, abdominal pain as well as low back pain. And the history of a directed physical exam is what's critical in making this diagnosis and the key to the, the successful treatment. This is the book I wrote on peripheral nerve entrapments. I am pleased to offer that as a PDF to anyone who would be interested in it. I'm quite proud of this particular volume and all you need to do is email me and I'm happy to send you a copy of the, the book. And I think I've got you back on schedule.